Welcome friends, in this video we're going to learn about triggers. So let me put that down as a comment. And what a trigger allows you to do is take an action as follows. So triggers allow taking actions after, as this example will show, an update, delete, or an insert. Okay. So we have a table, we define a trigger on the table, and then when we perform some action on the table, the trigger allows us to respond to that action automatically. Let's take a look at an example here. I'm gonna use my dbase this time. And I'm going to use the table that we had earlier, so I will say the following. Remember we had this table called sales amounts. It was an Excel file originally. If you don't have it, I put the Excel file back on the lesson resources, so you may have to import it first. Let's take a look at that table again, okay? So I'm going to type this. I'm going to say SP columns and then sales amounts. And I want to take a look inside the table first. Let's see what fields we have. So you've got the salesperson ID, the amount, and the date. And what I want to do is add just one column. That's an ID column as an example. Just to show you something different. Take a look. I'm going to say this. Alter table, and then sales amounts. And how do you alter a table using a script like this? Well, alter table, and then you type add. And now you can make a list of columns you add. I'm going to add just one column. So I'll say ID, that's the name of the column. INT, the data type is integer. It's going to be a primary key. And then lastly, it's going to be the identity. So I'm going to say identity here. 1 comma 1. Remember, this means the record 1 will start at 1, and then every time you add a new record, the ID will grow by 1. I hope you've got that. Let's give this an execution. Let's see what happens. Just highlight this. Let execute. And it says commands completed successfully. So let's confirm that, though. And to do that, let's go back to sp underscore columns. Remember, this is, if you have a mouse over it, it's a stored procedure. And it comes by default with SQL Server. That's why you can call it. And if you hover your mouse over it, it tells you a whole bunch of stuff. One of them is stored procedure mydbase.sys.sp underscore columns and then at table underscore name. That's how I know that I should write a table name. And then after that, it says nvar char. Then you can specify the table name. And if you look very carefully, there are additional parameters that you could set. For our purpose, those are not relevant. Like the table owner, table qualifier, column name, and so on. So that's this. We've modified the table. Let's take a look at it again. So I'm going to say select star from and then sales amounts. Give that a go. And what do we have here? Well, we have the same table. The only difference is now we have an ID column. And on the left side in the Object Explorer, let's refresh the view. So right-click on Tables and give it a refresh. And make sure that the sales amounts you see is refreshed. Go to the Columns node, then you see ID, PK, comma, INT, comma, not null. So this is a programmatic or script-based way of adding a column to a table, as you see it here. Very good. So now let's move on. On the next stage here, I'm going to say this. Create trigger. And now we're going to create our trigger. And then you name the trigger. So I'm going to say, for example, on delete and update and insert. I'm naming the trigger this to kind of indicate an action. So on delete update insert. This will run in that case. And then you type on, and then the name of the table the trigger should be applied to. So I'll say sales amount. As shown here. Let me space this out. So create trigger, give it a name that you make up, use the on keyword, and then the table name that again is in the object explorer. At the next stage, I will say this. I will say after update, delete, and insert like that. So this trigger will run after one of these actions has been completed, an update, a delete, or an insert on a table, on the sales amounts table. 
and then I will type as, and then you define the body of the trigger. Now, imagine our trigger will function this way. When you perform an action, like for example, the delete, insert, or the update, right after that, you copy out the table. So at least you have at least a somewhat recent version of the table, you see? Obviously, it'd be better if you could copy it out and then perform an action. But this will, for our purposes, do also. So again, right after you complete an update, delete, or insert, you copy the table out. So at least you have a somewhat recent version of the table saved, okay? So to do that, take a look. Well, first of all, you may want to fix that. I'm sure you know how. So I'm just going to put go, separate things into batches. There you go. And the next stage here, I'm going to say if and then object ID. And in my case, right after an update, a delete or an insert on a table, I will copy the records out into a temporary or holding table or some kind of backup table, essentially. So at least we have something relatively fresh. So to do that, take a look. I will say the following. If the object underscore ID sales amounts temp is not null, I will first drop that, and then I will make a copy of the records. So take a look. I'm just going to disable this line first. I'm not going to add it now. You have to see why it's added. So it's more clear. I will say this. I will simply say select star into sales amounts temp from sales amounts. So, so far, all this is saying is the following. You're imagining this as a single block now, okay? And what it's saying is when you do an update, delete, or insert on sales amounts on that table, right after that essentially if that completes successfully say you're going to take the sales amounts table and just copy it to like a backup table but now there's a problem you see hovering mouse over it and it says there's already an object named sales amounts tim in the database we need to fix that imagine i just try to run this create trigger highlight the create trigger portion give it an execution and that's this command completed successfully. Let's do it one more time. And now it says query completed with errors. And it says there's already an object named on delete update insert in the database. So we already have the trigger. So we would also now have to be sure that the trigger is dropped, especially if you want to make it and remake it. Make it and remake it. Make it and remake it. You've got to drop it at some point. Okay? So how can we go about this? Well, we can say stuff like this. Take a look. I'm going to say if, and then I will say object ID within single quotes on delete update insert is not null, like that. If that's not null, then you're going to have to drop it, okay? So take a look. Right after the is not null, type this. Drop trigger on delete update and insert. And as soon as you do that, take a look. You see? Must be the only statement in the batch. So this line right there, where you're dropping the trigger, right after it, put a go. Okay, I hope you've got that. All right, so this code, as you can see, is somewhat less structured, I think, than, than code we have written previously, but it still works together. All right, so I'm going to run this again one more time. Highlight everything, including the top on delete update where that is dropped or gotten rid of. Execute that and look at query executed successfully down below. That's good. So at the next stage now, take a look very carefully. This is still giving us a problem. You see, there's already an object named sales amount temp. So now we need to do this. I'm going to say if object ID like that sales amounts temp is not null, then you've got to get rid of it first. So you will say drop table sales amounts temp. And then after that, you should be able to select everything into the sales amounts temp from sales amounts. 
All right, so let's give this a go, everything. So from the top, take a look. So now we are seeing commands completed successfully. That's good. That's what we want. Now I hope you see by now why each line here that I've coded is necessary, what purpose it serves, and why if you remove it, you might get some errors along the way. So lastly, we want to confirm that this trigger actually operates. Okay, so when I do an update or a delete or an insert on a table, that the table actually is copied according to what the trigger says. So let's take a look at that stage next. I will say this. Update, sales amount, like that. So update and then the sales amounts table name. And then I will say something like this, for example, set and then amount. And I know that I should type that because remember, I have sales amounts expanded on the left side in the Object Explorer. And I know what the fields are. Sales, person ID, amount, and date. So I will say as an example, set amount equal to some new value that I just make up. Doesn't really matter. And then where, as an example, ID equals, and then stick in some value. So for example, five. So what I'm going to do now is take a look. Just to prove this works, this is actually doing something. On the left side, I'm going to go through the tables. I'm going to find the one called sales amounts temp. Right click on it and delete it. I've deleted that table called sales amounts temp. And make sure that in the object explorer on the left side, if you go to the sales amounts table, right here, sales amounts table. And if you go and make sure to look at the inside the triggers folder, you have that trigger saved. You should see a little icon, looks like a thunderbolt. So make sure that sales amounts table that has the trigger saved. And now I'm just going to run this block of code, highlight it, and execute it. And if you look carefully, it says 15 rows affected. And then lastly, one row affected. Okay, let me pull this down. And let's take a look. So on the left side now, remember, if the trigger has run correctly, then according to this, right after we made a change to sales amount, we should have a new table copied out called sales amounts temp. So let's confirm that. On the left side, refresh the tables view. Right click on tables and refresh. And look very carefully. Remember, I deleted this table called sales amounts temp. But now it's back. The only thing is, remember, when you copy from one table to another using the into clause, it doesn't preserve, for example, what is a primary key. The ID is just copied out as an integer, but the fact that it's an ID that's a primary key is not preserved. Okay, keep that in mind. You're just copying the, basically the table, the information from the table, but some of the information about each column is lost during their process. Keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you, and I'll see you next one.